How's it going YouTube? It's APOC and I just wanted to update one of my old tutorials of how to have 3D objects attached to the person in front of a portrait background segmentation setup. So I'm going to do a real quick advanced overview for the advanced users can just get a real quick overview of how the project set up and they can copy it. Then I'm going to do a step by step beginner walkthrough right after that. So stick around if you're more of a beginner. All right, for advanced users, the first thing you, you're going to need is a orthographic camera, two screen images, one for the background, one for the person. Either of these is fine to have the unlit texture one or material one, doesn't matter, but I choose to do it with the person. You set it to unlit and you add imposity texture portrait background. If you're on the background, you don't have to do anything else after that. If you're on the person, you want to invert the portrait background segmentation. Now, you want to set this render target to its own thing, not the one that this camera is using. Make sure you do that. So I have render target two here. Now I'll go up to this one, make sure clear colors checked, set your input to render target two. Now that camera's getting input. Then in here, you just put all your 3D objects and anything else you want to add on top of that, that can go outside the boundary and you're done. That's how simple it is. Real simple to do, guys. Now on to the beginner tutorial. All right, welcome to the beginner tutorial. So the first thing we need to do is actually set up that portrait background scene. To do that, we're going to be using uh, two screen images. To add a screen image, you just go to your objects panel, click add new and scroll down to screen image. It should be the third one down. You may have some favorites set at the top though. Once you add one, just right click when you're when you added and click on duplicate so we can have two of them. You're going to rename the top one. You don't have to rename anything, but for the sake of keeping things organized, I suggest renaming it and rename the bottom one person. On your background, we're going to click on that and we're going to click on the texture inside the image component. This is your background. Set it to whatever you like. I'm going to use one that's already in Lens Studio here. I'm going to change the fill mode to stretch so it fills up the whole screen. Now, for our person, we're going to need to change a bit more. The default material doesn't have any opacity texture option, so we have to add our, a new material ourselves. Click on the material and choose unlit. The reason we're using unlit is because it doesn't have any lighting effects or anything like that. We don't need any of those because it's not a 3D object, it's just a 2D image. So choose unlit, and then when the unlit loads in, you want to Click on it down here in your resources. The first thing you want to do is change your blend mode. A disabled blend mode won't allow any opacity effects. So your opacity textures won't work. You can't really lower the alpha or anything. The blend mode just blocks all that. You want to set it to normal. So this is enabled. The next thing you want to do is change your base texture to device camera texture. You can also use a camera input here, but that's a bit more advanced. So we won't be doing that, but I will show you how to make a camera input in this tutorial very shortly. So you can actually apply that with a third camera to this one, if you'd like. But for sake tutorial, we'll use device camera texture. So as you can see, now it's taking up the whole screen with this. We want only the person, obviously, on top of the background. To do that, we add an opacity texture. Opacity texture just tells basically what parts to render or just show. So. Click on opacity texture, it might load for a second, and then you'll see an option for a texture. Click on that, and when the panel pops up, click add new. Go down and hover over segmentation texture, and click on portrait background. As you can see, this put our background inside of where our person is. So we know that background segmentation is working, we just need to invert it. To do that, you just have to go to your resources panel, click on portrait background segmentation, and check inverted. While you're here, you can also play with the options. There's a refine edge option, and there's a feathering option. I usually turn the feathering down a little bit. I don't like it that much. So now we have our background segmentation all set up. We just need to put our 3D objects in. To do this, we need to make, the, make this an input to this camera. So we need to make our own render target specifically for the orthographic camera. To do that, you just click on render target here, click on add new, and click render target. Now we need to click on our original camera and check clear color. This will allow you to set an input camera or texture. Now click on the input texture to change it and choose render target two, which is the render target we set for the orthographic camera. This will now make that camera, the orthographic camera, an input to this camera. So now anything added to this camera is just adding on top of whatever's coming from this camera. That means if we put a 3D model 
in this, it will show up right on top and not interfere with anything. So to add a 3D model attached to the face, you click on add new while this is selected, click add new, choose face effects, choose head binding. Now inside of this, under the head binding, make sure the head binding is the parent, you can add any 3D objects you want. They also give you an occluder you can choose to use if you'd like. So we're gonna add in a sphere just to show you it's working. And I'm gonna expand this sphere out a little bit. And as you can see, it's working beautifully. And that's how you do it. Add any three models you want. You can add a multiple under here if you'd like. Does not matter. And uh, yeah, that's the tutorial. Thanks for watching. And uh, let me know in the comments if there's any tutorials you want to see or something I may have missed in this tutorial that you want me to touch on in the comments or make a better version. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you can stick around just a little bit longer while I talk to you about my company, Scarlet Social. To save your time, I only talk about one thing we do, but we do so much more. I encourage you to contact us and just ask, what do we do? Our most popular service is Social AR. Social AR is augmented reality that exists within existing social media platforms, so you don't need to make your own app. This is the most accessible form of AR in existence and is why it's so popular with brands, because it is fun, is engaging, and people like to share it. It's one of the best ways to advertise right now, and I truly believe that. At Scarlet Social, we pride ourselves on being some of the most experienced in the world for social AR, picking it up when it first started a long time ago on Snapchat. If you would like to learn how social AR can benefit your business, just reach out to us on scarletsocial.com and click the Contact Us button. I'll talk to you on the phone or in person for free to go over all the ways I think Social AR will work for you. Thanks for watching and listening, and have a creative day.